Hello everyone. I'm just going to let folks stream in. But uh, please let me know if the audio volume is now correct. I hope it is. Uh, I've been trying to mess around with these settings a bit. Excellent. We have our first legitimate uh, person viewing. Hello, Rol Rolkin. How is the volume on your end? Oh, hey, Max. Good, good. Um, I screwed it up yesterday, so that's very useful to know. Um, and, yes. Alright. I, um, it's a local-ish uh, ambient musician uh, who does a lot of really nice work, and uh, he's got something like four different albums of space-themed music, so it's a really nice thing to just sort of have on in the background. So let's just wait. There's going to be a few other people who come streaming in. Wonderful. So, uh, please feel free to drop questions in the chat. Uh, it definitely makes it a lot more interactive, which is helpful. Um, I did another complete video that uh, folks will be able to find uh, both on my channel and on YouTube. I'm currently getting it set up on YouTube. And that included a process of setting up the grid, um, setting up your typefaces generally, your styles, etc. So um, what I've done is I've effectively taken the same document that I had working on yesterday and I have done some cleanup, made some adjustments. Um, I've unfortunately um, had to or found that it was necessary to change my avant-garde uh, heading location, it was originally going to be at the bottom of the screen, and I instead chose to put it at the top, um, which is traditional, but it, it seemed to work a little bit better in this context. So, uh, so yeah, the plan for this particular session is that I'm going to go through 
um, the process of taking the text from a Word document, dumping it in, applying all the styles, etc., all the things, all the presets that I've already made, and showing how the text flows into the existing layout, showing how all that prep work that I had done really comes in handy. So yes, uh, please feel free to drop questions in the chat um, at any point in time. Uh, so, but I think it is probably time to get started. So, where last we left off in Grid Thy Loins, um, episode one, uh, I set up the grids, the text, styles, etc. So, now, let's get started. Uh, so, I made some adjustments, and now I have three master pages. Standard. Um, they're all uh, letter-sized, three-column layouts. Um, three-column layouts for a la landscape letter is perfectly reasonable. Um, now, I'm usually critical of uh, three-column layouts in your standard um, RPG book, uh, particularly because there's just not enough real estate to have three comfortable lines in your standard portrait dimension book, which is why I, I much prefer two-column or one-column layouts in those contexts. Um, but since we're doing landscape, those columns are wide enough. Um, I figured that out by going in and dropping in some filler text. And as you can see, that sort of feels comfortable. Um, there's no huge uh, rivers, uh, which are the white lines that sort of are contiguous within the text. Um, so this this generally feels fairly reasonable now there's a few things like this um where we've got some orphans going on here um which i would want to deal with uh, there's all sorts of settings that i can use to address things like that so well i wait to see if anyone else drops in let's go in and try to fix that so all of the details um, that I'm looking for when I'm messing around with text are hiding under the uh, styles, the text styles. Typically under the paragraph styles. So, um, this is the kind of thing where I want flow. So, text can start anywhere. Uh, I'm going to keep a paragraph together. Prevent widowed last lines. Let's prevent widowed first lines. And keep with the previous paragraph. So these are all of the various options. So this should... For instance, those two paragraphs should be staying together. Of course, the entire thing about streaming is that I show off uh, where I make mistakes on a day-to-day -day basis. I usually find there's a lot of... Um, There's a lot of um, trial and error. All right. Okay, let's get... All right, so yes, this will automatically...
Perfect. This is an interesting breakdown. It shows uh, when my paragraphs are too long, it breaks, and it gives us these nice, um, there's a nice strong white line across the top, effectively, and everything's hanging down off of it, which is a fairly nice look. It's fairly comfortable to the eye. Uh, and I'd be able to put in page breaks. I can manually change some of the flow issues so that this generally works out. All right, now that I've got that under control, let's just remove this filler text and get started. So right now, all I do is I have a single uh, page open. Uh, yeah, so I've got a single page open, and I'm going to pick up my text from the full game. Uh, so this is all for my game, Fate of the Galaxy. So I'm going to uh, literally just select everything. Uh, now, normally I would do a little bit of cleanup in here. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do that over in Word first, uh, just to try to reduce the work a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to look at paragraph mark. So replacing all... Uh, no, that won't work. Uh, so I will replace... So wherever there's two paragraph marks, perfect. So wherever there's two paragraph marks, it just turns into one. Uh, this was normal. I mean, I'm going to be nuking all of these styles anyways, but... It's uh, nice to sort of see this... Uh, writ large. So, this is 10,000 words, which is a fairly significant amount of text. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to do a bunch of cleanup on this, um, because I was a little sloppy when I did the layout, uh, when I did the um, text preparation in the first place. However, this should still be fine. All right, so I'm going to select everything. And just... So I can actually place text um, directly this way. So let's try doing that. Now, of course, whenever you're trying to do layout programs plus streaming online, yeah, it's going to cause some problems. Processing, processing. I believe in you. Um, well, I mean, it's also 10,000 words that it's trying to place in. Um... So I've never actually used the proper place functionality. I am I actually suspect what it's going to do is it's going to drop in all the styles, uh, which will be 
which would then for therefore require me to do a whole bunch of work to reassign styles. Um, but it would st streamline some other elements of the work, so yeah, we'll see how it shakes out. Assuming that it actually does work and it doesn't just plain hang on me. I'm just being impatient. I should just wait. Well, in the meantime, I'm just going to see what I've got in the text itself. Um, yeah, so there's all sorts of things such as uh, the capitalization throughout. Uh, yeah, so I've got some places where I haven't. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, so this is just my crude um, layout work that I'd done for uh, the text version of it. Now, hopefully, I'm just going to assume that this has crashed and then restart it. Don't mind me. All right. Now, fortunately, Affinity Publisher actually has some decent recovery tech. So, even though that crashed, uh, it is not all lost. Um, so, we'll see as this opens up to have it prove me wrong. Uh, but... So, welcome, Clark. Wonderful. All right. So I'm just going to save that now, just to be safe. All right. So I'm going to try the other way of doing this. Selecting all of the text. And instead of using the place functionality, I'm just going to paste it in. Uh, pasting without format, of course, because I want to be doing all of the format work myself manually. Now, it's still going to take a little while, but it should be faster than the place function was. Um, and uh, as I was saying before, I have already set up all the styles. So now it's just running the text through the styles and doing the relevant cleanup. Um, honestly, there's a lot of drudgery involved with this, uh, but I think it's worthwhile. Uh, to sort of show this off. Um, so I've got three master pages. Uh, so for the title page, I'm going to go... Um, yep, 
Now, I happen to know that my... I need to do something along those lines for my heading to work correctly. Um, I should actually have a proper logo for this, um, but I haven't gotten around to preparing one. Um, I could actually just do this right now, now in design, and that would probably be a fairly sensible thing, but uh, I'll just wait for that for right now. Uh, so on this title page, uh, this is of course going to be an exception. Uh, so I'm going to open up the master page saying, okay, for this specific version of the master page, I don't need uh, the page number, I don't need the text. I'm going to keep this lovely header because that's uh, going to be a common element, but I'm actually going to increase the size of that since it is the title of the game. Uh, so, if those are 48, then let's make this 24. Alright, so I finished that off. So now let's drop in a picture for our front cover, and then I'll toss in things like um, author's names, credits, etc. Now, I currently have a pile of art that's available for this. Um, I, I was actually quite proud of some of this. Uh, we got some procedurally generated plans. Uh, that we were able to use for the art, which was literally stellar. Uh, and let's drop this in. So, we don't need all the grids and guides. So all the colors being stripped out of this naturally, because uh, we wanted to uh, we wanted to make sure that it worked on your home printer. which is why I can't actually do much in the way of bleed, unfortunately. Uh, it would be delightful to do that, but uh, that's just not going to fly. Uh, pun intended. Uh, so I'm just going to transform this to make sure I've got some nice even numbers. Uh, let's make this a 10.5 and exactly half an inch. And exactly half an inch. And then that's going to be exactly four inches high. X. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. It is 11 inches, not an 11 and a half inches. So let's bring this up here. So uh, this will work as a cover page for now. Um, Uh, 
I will, of course, uh, just do some basics here. Yeah, rule of thirds. Yeah, uh, rule of thirds is absolutely a useful thing. Uh, so the actual golden ratio comes to, I think it's roughly like 38% and 62%. Um, it's slightly off from the one third, uh, exactly. Um, and I, I certainly could do that in this case. I'm... I kind of am in certain ways. If you look at, uh, if you include the fate of the galaxy as part of the image, um, there's like there, there's a few things like that, um, but a lot of it, honestly, at this point, is subconscious. Um, a lot of it, I'm doing without realizing I'm doing it. So, I'm just actually going to go in, pick this up, and remove the master entirely. That will make things easier. Yeah, so there's all sorts of little things that I could be doing in here. Uh, so, for instance, let's see what it looks like when I run off of... Yeah, that's not bad. So right now, this is using some decorations. Uh, so de detaching this, so there's no more styles to it. Yeah, now that was clearly not what I wanted to do. Ah uh, yes, that's that's actually probably what I what I should be doing here. Uh, so following the rule of thirds, uh, this image itself is wide but doesn't have all of the uh, necessary height to meet a clean ratio. So what I'm actually going to do here is cheat like the best of them and establish this as black. Uh, now. So what the heck are you doing there? So this should be showing up as a straight black. Ah, my opacity was still set. And with no stroke. So what I'm doing is I'm affecting I'm effectively artificially um, increasing the height of the image so that it uh, better fits, setting an overlap, and then cheating outrageously. Uh, so this Gradient slightly off. Oh, 
Okay, so it's linear. Oh, okay, yes. Sorry, don't mind me. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. So, this is a lot more comfortable in terms of layout. Um, it gives all of the necessary weight up here. Here. And let's just toss this also in. So I have a tendency of reflexively trying to center everything, which often causes problems uh, because what what really matters is that you align your shapes appropriately so this one's just a little too small but by increasing this to let's call that 16 points then I can realistically place this under the word galaxy. Let's increase the distance here. And Now, one thing that I would have to think about here is I'm... This particular approach looks great on a screen, but it would probably... I would probably get some comments about killing people's home printers using this much black. So I'll probably wind up coming back to this and doing something a little bit more printer friendly. But hey, on first principles, this looks fairly decent. Um, and let's just, now let's see how many horrible typos I have since I was writing in white. doesn't need to be quite that humble uh, in terms of sizing uh, since we have a full page. Um, and since I'm a company, I might as well also drop in my own company work mark. I'm just going to do this all off screen. Uh, of course it won't let me. Okay. Well. Oh good. You, you don't have to actually see the horror that is my file structure.
All right. So now that we've got at least a rudimentary first uh, title page ready, let's just save this and move on to page number two. And let's just drop in... Let's put four standard pages in. So... I think... Yes, do I have... Yes, I don't have any overset text because I deleted everything that was actually using that. So I will copy this text again and paste it once again in this fresh text box. And of course, questions always valuable. Uh, okay, so now that I've got that out of the way, so my header one introduction. I've already done all of the messing with the text, so I what I'm really doing here is I'm just going through and quickly setting the hierarchy. Uh, so for instance, everything that's got bullets, I will be turning that into the proper bullet style. And then going in and deleting the fake bullets. Um, that are remnants of my word processor. Um, theoretically, I should actually be using markup uh, originally, and then just dropping it in directly, but it isn't part of my established workflow yet. Um, there's a lot of things where having sufficient uh, internalized programming knowledge will really help you, uh, because it lets you bypass some of the uh, visual arts interface elements that tends to create clutter. Um, using regular expressions can be invaluable, of course. Um, the only reason why I'm not actually just manually going in and saying, hey, delete everything that is a bullet followed by X number of white spaces is because I want it to be super clear which sections actually have bullets um, so that I know to apply the bullet style. Uh, but with an effective uh, set of grep commands, I could even do that. Um, so, bullet. So this is also a bullet from the previous list. And likewise. So I've got a few options here. Um, as you can see, there's clearly something off here. Uh, the uh, wrong paragraph break was one of them. Uh, the This hyphenation is a problem. Uh, so I'm going to see if I have any effective ways of undoing that specific hyphenation. Um, I may have to simply uh, make a few other... Uh, other little changes here. Um, okay, yeah, I'm going to try to just... I'm just going to nuke hyphenation again. Um, because, quite frankly, it annoys me anyways. So, uh, 
So because this URL goes slightly longer, what I'm going to do is effectively just tighten up this paragraph. So that moves the playing to this last sentence, which gives me a nice clean space for the URL. Now, there is clearly something wrong here, and I'm curious if you see what's wrong. Uh, so, the thing that's going on here is there's clearly not enough space above the word quick start. And we only have one lonely bullet here. Yep, orphan bullet in the first column. Perfect. Uh, so, there's a couple ways I can handle that. Uh, one of them is... So, I've created all the styles, but I haven't fully tested them out in all the cases. So, the first, you know, chapter, I'm going to be making a lot of small edits to these styles. So, I'm going to go in and mess around with the spacing a bit. Uh, so, I'm going to set this up as... Is that going to be a 12 or an 18? Perfect. Uh, so that's one way of handling it. Now, there's all sorts of little punctuation issues that were uh, errors in the original text. Um, and this is... Uh, a beautiful example of why we need copy fitting. So, I could just try to compress this extremely and make it hyper compressed. Um, but, a more elegant approach is to say, instead of the complete version of this game, the full version of the game will also include. I changed complete with full, and that uh, really helps. That gives me a lot more space, and I'm actually just going to go back and set the spacing to the default again. And that's clean, just by changing the word complete to full. Um, seriously, letting your uh, layout artist just do that is extremely helpful. Uh, so, I'm trying to figure out... I want to add a little bit more oomph to this. So, I'm going to just see what it's like if I uh, uh, apply uh, the emphasis style on all of this. Okay, so that's that's lo actually looking fairly reasonable. Um, so this is another good example of a, uh, a selection of different galactic templates enabling you to take to play in different kinds of settings. Uh, so that's. I can easily turn this into multiple galactic templates. So you can. Play in different kinds of settings. So just You know, things like, I'm going to delete this more. A lot of this is just plain better writing. But it's particularly helpful in contexts such as this. Now, you might be wondering, why is Jason um, trying to crunch this so much? Um, I'm even going to crunch it more. The underlying reason here is... 
you see this block of text? Uh, this feels very open, very wide, and um, quite frankly, a little sloppy. So what I want to do is move this text right in here. Um, either that uh, or I could actually move that text here. That would actually make yeah that will actually make things even better. Uh, so I'm going to drop it in here Yeah, this is a annoying situation. Um, so sometimes I just cheat. Um, So, because I was able to do that, that gives me the ability to text, insert, uh, it probably doesn't show up there, uh, but I'm inserting a column break, so that shoves the text that says the quick start in the top of here, and now that I've got that in play, I can start going in and uh, tightening up the spacing. So this is where I notice that, hey, the spacing between these lines is a little excessive. So I'm going to edit this and going through some of the, sp some of the options here, uh, the letting so, the default letting tightens things up. So, I'm just going to do that. And that will help somewhat. Um, and, uh, effectively, by repeating this process, I will hopefully be able to pull this text up in here. Um, now, one way to do it is to simply get rid of um, the bullets. So by uh, bullets will always take more space. Uh, as per as compared to paragraphs. And I mean some of this information is unnecessary as well. Um, so the tyranny of layout is forcing me to be more uh, concise with my text um,
So, out of my motivation to get rid of that, I was able to uh, condense this down to a basic paragraph. Uh, I'll just get rid of my character style. And I wanted to do that because now I can make another heading in the other column which lines up perfectly. So the quick start and safety tools line up perfectly. Uh, so then I'm able to do things like put in these headings. So clearly there's a problem with my style. So Sinzel Bold 14 is my heading 2 and Bold 12 is my heading 1. So um, that's not going to work out. So I'm going to... So my main text is actually 10. So I'm going to try seeing what that works. So that looks decent. That generally works. Uh, so I'm going to use that going forward. Uh, update heading 3. And now that's too much space. So I'm going to edit my heading 3, look at the spacing, and turn the space out... Uh, space after two zero so it looks like my body has more space before than I want uh, yeah use space before uh, only between paragraphs and let's make this six All right. So, from a distance, this looks a lot better. Uh, they look as they seem to be distinct chunks of text. Um, they hold together, and there's a more solid hierarchy in play. Um, so. As soon as I get something like this set up, so I've made all, a number of small changes to the various styles. This means that I can now add another page. And what I do is I load the cursor and I tell this frame, hey, you want to flow this text in here. Uh, so. So the text, yeah, it looks like my heading three needs to have less space before it. Uh, perfect. So this is going to be, so I'm going in and checking in new headers. So we have uh, proper terms. So leader is a proper uh, noun in this. So what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm telling, saying, uh, mark this as strong. These should all be proper bullets. So I'm not actually doing much in the way of work. I'm I'm really just going in and saying apply these preset styles to the given different checks. I'm 
using my ability as a human to interpret um, poorly ordered and poorly or poorly structured text and saying uh, this is this is what category this is in now I could actually set things up and say the first word or every word that comes up to a colon uh, within a bullet gets bolded um, as a style. I've done that before. Um, and that would work fairly well. Uh, I don't need it in this specific uh, situation. Uh, but it's an option. So this is an interesting situation. I have enough content in here that I might be able to... Uh, like, I could probably condense this. But because these are specific terms that I want to emphasize, what I'm actually going to do is break them across columns. which is going to give me my own uh, interesting little uh, challenge to deal with. But I'll get to that in a sec. Um, I'm going to have a whole bunch of white space to deal with. However, this is going to be significantly more useful. And I know that um, Galactic Atlas um, is going to be its own um, header uh, that's, that's going to need its own space. So, in the long run, this will be useful, but it's going to take a little bit of finessing to make this work cleanly. So, so just going in, dropping in the styles, I'm going to have more white space than I know what to do with. This is the specific place where art comes in handy. Because any place that you have uh, white space is space that you could drop an art piece in. Um, uh, so I just did a forced line, manual line break. Uh, three players only. Uh, which means that I get to haul that over. I'm just going to set this as ragged right uh, so that the wacky justification stuff doesn't interfere. Um, Commander Bastion of the Red Sashes. Wonderful. So, right now I've got a, a few things going on here. One, the names of these are not fully standing out as much as I'd like. Um, as compared to some of these. So what I'm going to actually do here is uh, take advantage of the additional space I have at my disposal and create a heading three. Which means that I can unbold this while maintaining the same amount of emphasis.
Sorry, I know this is probably uh, slightly less exciting than watching paint dry, but uh, I figured, you know, it's a Sunday night. Not everyone has a game tonight. Um... All right. Now, of course, one of the other exciting little uh, challenges here is uh, I'm actually going to have a section for authority, and I'm not going to have exactly enough space for it in here in this column. Uh, so I'm going to have to make some choices. Um, because if I'm following the same... the same uh, model, then I need to do... this. <sighs> so, I have white space here uh, that I'm not using properly. So, I have a couple options at my disposal to address this problem. Uh, so, one of these is I'm going to see what happens if I stack leaders and agents together. Uh, this is just crude. I should be doing something else to actually make that happen, but how much space does this take? So, this isn't bad. Like, I can pull that off. Uh, and leaders and agents are conceptually close enough that it actually makes some kind of sense. Uh, so, uh, let's set that as a heading three. Delete my manual line break. Uh, set you back up there. Uh, so then all I need to do is make the minor changes necessary. Now, I can actually mess with uh, specific pieces of text on an individual basis. Um, normally, just try to deal with this by dealing with the styles, but sometimes I cheat, um, as is my right. Um, so, th that gives me just that little bit of extra space. Uh, I'll pull up the names of these leader characters by reducing the distance under that paragraph down to six. And now, when I zoom out, the reason why I would want to do that is that lets me move something else into that column on the right. So my questions are, what do I want to move there? I can move... Um, I think I'm going to move uh, faces because they are important people um, and they... who can be good, can be bad. Uh, so... I'll just drop faces in there. So a lot of this is just, hey, I need to move this chunk of text slightly earlier, this chunk of text a little bit later, so that I'm able to effectively use the space on the page. Um,
so this is where my sloppiness came to haunt me. All right. Yeah, and I'm going to be shut, uh, closing down shortly as well. Have an excellent evening, Clark. A lot of this is just Jason's lonely fun um, on a Sunday night. Um, it's out of that or playing Hades, so I figure I might as well do some layout. Uh, so with this under control, now I've got some juicy, juicy white space that I can play with. So it is time to drop in an image. So I've got a lot of art available to me. Yeah, I think this looks idealistic enough. Uh, so I will just drop this in. And set a wrap function. Uh, so that it's a square wrap. And then I will set this... Uh, to go out into the border of it. Yeah, yeah. Up here means that it's lined up with agents. Um, it actually, well, it's not fully lined up. Uh, I need to actually set this to show up on my... Uh, I should be able to set this... Uh, so that it's actually positioned properly. Baseline grid, align to baseline grid. So if that's aligned to the baseline grid, then this should and the word agents line up with each other correctly. And of course, I think this is where my custom manipulation causes all the problems. Uh, all right. Just because having them lined up looks significantly better.
All right. That's probably going to be enough for this evening. So I hope that those of you who are watching this video in the future uh, enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of uh, little minute adjustments uh, in order to get um, a decent layout set up. But I'm... It, it's actually fairly relaxing. Um, so it's worth trying out at some point um, for any of your own products. Uh, so this is what we've got after um, an hour and a half of setting up our templates and another hour and a half of doing the proper layout. So uh, I will see folks next time. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you all for joining.